Hello. Hey, hello, Glenn. Uh, Ben's coming here. Oh. Here you go. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, yeah, that guy sounds just like you, man. <laughs> oh. He does? Yeah. That's Tom, our cook. Oh. 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 Cook's he, pretty... He rents a room upstairs. Oh. oh. He's the only boarder right now. Oh. I thought you lived by yourself. Um, All right. The house has uh, uh, four rooms that could be rented. Oh. Uh, sometimes the four rooms have been rented, and I live in my RV outside. Oh. But when there are no borders, i got to take care of the house. So mm. I kind of move into the basement. Into what I call my cave. The <laughs> <laughs> hideout. Uh, um, I, I'm kind of curious, cause I don't know. I heard like, okay, like you said, and uh, like, you know, it's like say like Freemasonry. You said there's 90 degrees, and it's like a right angle. Why would they say 360? Cause you, it adds up to 360. But why would they say uh, like? Like I've heard Alan mention, oh, 360 degrees and stuff like that, and they call them the Olympians or whatever these guys. Why would, would they? I'm say? not a Freemason, and I never have been, as far as I. No, no, I'm not saying. No, so, I'm not saying you. I never said you were Freemason. No, no, but so, so I am only speaking of what I have discovered along the way. Oh, okay. And. Uh, to me, um, uh, the 360 thing would be linked to the circle they put around the cross on some churches. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it basically is suggestive that everything they begin uh, takes off in a direction and ends up going full circle. Mm. The um, the two big symbols of that are uh, in Australia. The marsupial is the symbol for an interrupted birth, an interrupted development of the fetus. Mm -hmm. Because at one stage of the game, the uh, kangaroo and other marsupials would have the fetus crawl out of the mother and into a pouch where it completes its birth cycle, its evolution. Mm. Uh, and that is basically what they do when they manufacture two-in-one people. Mm -hmm. They interrupt by... A means of spontaneous abortion, the development of the fetus, and then put it in an incubator, live or mechanical, where it continues its journey and comes out different than how it started. Male on top, female inside, or female inside, male on top, or whatever. Mm. The um, other symbol of Australia is that uh, they have a weapon called a boomerang. Oh, how it comes back to you. you. throw it, and it comes back and hits you in the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's the, the, uh, the word Aussies, as well, is linked to the French word assis, which means seated. You don't do anything. You just begin the process and wait until it comes back to you. Oh. You you sit down and wait, and that's why they say they also serve who only stand and wait or sit and wait. So what's the um symbolism? Because I I remember reading in that, like Morals and Dogma, by Albert Pike, he brought up the egg and how I think it's supposed to signify. Well, the egg is the beginning of things. Yeah, yeah. And the egg 
um, is shaped in a way that the orbit of Earth around the sun can change the temperature, the mean average temperature on Earth at a certain stage. Mm. The egg is designed the way it is so that it doesn't stay in the same place all the time. The, um, the temperature of something inside an egg varies depending on where the yolk happens to be. If you are at the end of the high point on an egg, you are the furthest away from the chicken sitting on you, and therefore the temperature would be cooler. If you're at the circular part, the temperature would be warmer. The difference is minuscule, minuscule, a couple of degrees, uh, but it can make the difference in the development of some parts of the fetus. Mm. And that's basically linked to what we're going through now, climate change. Wow, like a ma- macrocosm. The, the melting of the ice can occur on this planet with the simple change in mean temperature by two degrees. And, and that's simple enough to understand. You put the sun in the middle and you make a circle around it, the temperature would be constant. But if you make it the orbit in the shape of an egg, you can understand that at one stage of the game, the uh, Earth is further away from the sun than it is normally. And that means it gets cooler, ice age. So the whole thing with global warming, from what I learned, they're just using it like an excuse to take people's uh, rights, more rights away from people. Yeah, it's it's a way to make money. Yeah. But Prior I, to the destruction, yeah. it's because we're going through a process called repo. Uh, They're repossessing everything that Marco Polo was given. And uh, not satisfied with having been toll gators on everything that was made from what he brought back. Uh, through things like taxes and fees and and those kinds of charges, uh, they now wanted all of the technology back so that they can do a final check on its validity mm. and uh, and then destroy the rest of the people in the southern hemisphere uh, and then move underground and and wait for this event that will uh, change the planet. The the number of events include uh, the uh, water coming on land from from the seas and, and oceans, rocks falling from the sky from some cataclysmic event of crashing or exploding the moon or something to that effect, and then the nova that lights the coal seam. Um, the word um, concern is is not an accident. Uh, the the particle accelerator in Switzerland is called CERN. So the phrase to whom it may concern, mm-hmm. con is basically conducting. Whom is conducting the CERN particle accelerator in May. Uh. All of these things are linked. Then you have the final, because these are the three events that happen on Earth. The final thing is the coming of the second sun. And the second sun is a, a sun outside of our solar system some, I forget, 77 light years away or something, that is uh, going to bring 
23 times the luminosity of our current sun. The blue-white star, so it's, it's what they basically uh, designed the concept of the Virgin Mary around, blue-white clothing, mm. um, and and the fact that it's it's going to make a totally different place where they will be introducing a new slave that will give birth by means uh, related to virginity. Mm, yeah, 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 I see. Giving birth to it. Take it out of a jar and stick it in, and, and it gets fertilized by the male part on the inside that carries one testy, and, and you have a, a baby re- from from the egg, but you're limited by the number of eggs you have, so that the controlling interest back in Antarctica and the Moho discontinuity will always be in charge, no matter where you happen to be in the solar system. Uh, if you start up a revolution, mm-hmm. like happened in the U.S., which is the the model for this. Um, and and say you want independence, well, you're not going to have the eggs to replicate your colony, colonialists, mm-hmm. <laughs> so it will just die out. Huh. And then you'll be replaced with uh, a, a new, uh, more uh, uh, obedient group. So these, uh, I guess, new slaves, they won't be able to, like, think for themselves. They'll just be, like, no. like a bee, right? Like, just like a part of, like, a, like, like the Borg, right? Yeah. The, uh, the model that they give is the letter E, capital letter E. As a matter of fact, I was just doing a thing to post uh, on that, and... The letter E is suggested that there's one person in charge. Mm-hmm. If you look on the left-hand side of a capital letter E, there's a bar from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. That's also and three backwards, right? And then there's three lines attached to it. Three and one. <laughs> yeah, the brain, yeah. the medulla, and the body all are linked directly without going through each other to the control mechanism bar one. So this year, what we're getting is uh, a TAN. Mm -hmm. A TAN is the first version of this future slave, but it's not the final version. It's like computer programs, you know. They put out Mm -hmm. uh, Netscape 6 and then Netscape 6.1 and Netscape... 6.2. Six point two. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, I see that. So these, like, these, so these things won't be like you know how like, I guess you could call like people like me, like they won't feel like attracted to another. No. They just. No. no. Well, they will have a single mind. Um, that's why they call it universe. Uni means single, mm-hmm. and verse means direction, ver in French, towards. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, single direction. All they care about is their work, wow. and their work is linked to uh, um, the boss, <laughs> <laughs> and they want you, like they tell you in the Bible, to adore the boss. <laughs> so, so that's that's the concept that they have in mind total control freaks and and therefore um obviously uh missing in some sense of self worth mm. they uh, they can't like themselves too much and therefore make up for it by being control freaks Instead of repairing the problem of why they don't like themselves. 
But the, the, these people are so such geniuses, one percent genius, that they can't figure this out. Uh, they uh, obviously have not to date, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, maybe we can help them. Uh, well, so the, the way that in the end it goes, they don't look anything like they would show. Like no, no. Oh well, probably. I, how how would anybody who looks like they show cavemen um, describe themselves as a shrub? It would, doesn't make sense. Mm. Uh, how how could they describe themselves as hippopotamus or alligators? Doesn't make sense. What it what does make sense is that they're short and plumpy. And uh, alligator basically suggests lizard linked to the spine. Um, oh, so do they look like those reptilian people? So they, 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 I would suggest look like hedgehogs. Oh. Um, a hedgehog or porcupine type animal that rolls itself into a ball when when it's afraid of something, you know, um, so that there seems to be no place to get at it. And that's why they call their religion Baal. Oh. (laughs) Um, And and the perfect Baal is 12 around 1, according to the laws of physics. I think I told you that before, that there was uh, a spacecraft that was sending a satellite to a rock out in the universe someplace, and that this particular rock uh, had absolutely no gravity, and therefore anything that would attempt to land always crashed. Uh, There was seemingly no way to stop it from destroying itself on landing until somebody read the laws of physics. And the laws of physics say that the perfect defense for a seed, for example, is an orange. And if you take the peel off an orange and you look at it, Uh, you will find that it has pieces that are linked together in a ball around the center. Twelve. So twelve around one seemed to be the answer. So they tried it. They they actually made a satellite, put it inside a balloon, put 12 balloons of equal size around it. Everything deflated, of course, for the trip. And when it got too close to the to the stone they wanted to land on, they ejected it and, and pushed it in the direction of that stone mm-hmm. and inflated the 13 balloons. And it bounced on that stone and it took quite a while where it stopped bouncing you know it would just roll around boom 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 but because there's no gravity mm-hmm. uh, it took a while and eventually it settled as it ran out of steam it settled in one place then they deflated the 13 balloons and cut a hole from the center out, and out came the rover or or sensor satellite or whatever it was they were sending out there. So I I always thought, like, the part of the reason why they had satellites out there, too, was to watch everybody, you know, on the surface. Uh, well, part of that is true if you consider the International Space Station. Mm-hmm. Um as as a platform mm-hmm. and the Hubble telescope uh future use and real purpose 
uh, it will be turned around and focused towards the earth. And you know what happens when you focus sunlight through a prism and and point it down to a, a particular place, you start a fire. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the whole idea. Uh, after they got rid of most of the people, they got to get around to killing off the stragglers, and uh, that will be one of the weapons that they use. Damn, man. These people are like cold hearted. So clinical. Man. In in the same manner as you are when you walk down Madison Avenue and you don't give a shit about ants. Uh, <laughs> but these guys don't care about life, period. Like, it's... Well, they do care about life because they care about survival for themselves. They obviously. Um, are intelligent enough that they've figured out where the safest place on this rock is. And and the safest place has to be uh, underneath those things that can be affected by things on in the solar system on the outside, and that's the sediment at the bottom of the oceans, the continents, and the oceans themselves. Uh, so those things can be affected by ANOVA, uh, can be melted in some places, can be rebuilt in other places. New mountains can arise, new continents can arise to balance off because you always have to keep that equilibrium. And they figured out, okay, well, if that's the case, then if you go to the core of the earth, it's too hot. Mm-hmm. If you go to the upper mantle, it's too hot. If you go no, if you go to the mantle, it's too hot. But if you go to the upper mantle, it's eh, so so. But the perfect place is where all of the things that ever lived on the surface of the earth mm-hmm. find refuge after they die. The salt of the earth comes through the ocean because the ocean used to be fresh water. And what we are is basically water and salt. And so we come through the ocean, and we've brought it up to a level, a percentage salt to water, which is uh, amenable to having life exist. And if you pass that point, if you put too much salt in water, you kill off the possibility of life. So... Through the gravity and pressures in the ocean, it pushes all of the excess salt down to the bottom through the sedimentary stuff on the bottom, and it then builds a shell around the upper mantle of the earth, which at this stage of the game I suggest is 32 miles thick, and it is uh, it encapsulates the whole inner uh, part of the earth. By that I mean the upper mantle, the mantle, and the core. And it is made out of a material called basalt, two-in-one salt. Because <laughs> the letter B is a two and the letter A is a one. Oh, that's why I always put... I have everything. I have original. I have. Yeah. I thought it meant able body, though, you know, altered no. being. So it means out of. Out of the original. And that's why I have Abraham. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I yeah. mean, nothing that you see on Earth today has not been affected by this process of uh, making things happen and giving it names that match the code. That's why you have to stop looking at books as books. You have to stop looking at chapters as chapters. You have to stop looking at paragraphs as paragraphs. And you have to start looking instead at syllables because it's the syllables that are the common denominators between all of the philosophers' building blocks. Mm. 
Oh. So if you have a syllable, mm -hmm. um, you go looking for other words with the same syllable, and you read definitions on all of them, and you'll find common denominator. And you'll know what the purpose of this word is, what it suggests. I've heard you mention too. You said that like the natives uh, are aware of this plan, and they're not doing some, it. Some some of the native people uh, were told at the beginning that there would be a cleansing of the surface of the earth at the end, mm -hmm. and that they would survive uh, and and kind of be in charge. And, and that was to buy their allegiance uh, to the bigger plan than just their lives. And um, along the way, what happened is the information was passed from generation to generation through what we call languaging, um, no written stuff, just person to person, and over time, mm -hmm. the the thing got corrupted, that although they believe certain things today, they um, are not what was the original message, um, and you can't say all natives believe, because some natives don't know anything, and some no more, and the ones that no more have been corrupted and brought into the system so that they provide a, an additional uh, weapon uh, for the system who use corporations and religion and monarchies and, and governments uh, to oppress people from above, the native people are used, some native people are used to uh, complete the circuit from below so that they squeeze the slaves in the middle. Mm. And, and uh, those, those people uh, can act as couriers for the system above. They act as a guilt trip on taxpayers. Um, taxpayers had nothing to do with their problems, but are always asked to apologize to them and, <laughs> and feel inferior to them. Uh, but in fact, they are simply people who have been manufactured originally out of the original Africans, and their name is Cro-Magnon, and their name since the Ice Age is Roma, and in Europe they call them uh, Roma or Gypsies. Around the rest of the world they are called Indigenous, which is linked to the word India. Mm. And us, <laughs> and uh, another word is aboriginal or aborigine. Something with the knee. <laughs> because the two E's together is what makes uh, the definition of the two-in-one slave uh, the number 88. So the, the final number of degrees is 90. On, on the upswing, and therefore an 88 is is your final versions before you get to the the two gatekeepers, um, which I suggest are Ma Bell and Shell Oil. Oh, really? Why do you say Ma, Ma Bell and Shell Oil? Well, Ma Bell is the major spy upon the people of the earth through the telephone system that we have, yeah, yeah. And, and Shell Oil is the one that has the links to the underground. Mm. And if you look at uh, 
some of the uh, ancient uh, symbolism, a shell coming out of the ocean pulled by 11 white horses uh, called Neptune. Neptune is, is linked nep to the word set in French, which means seven. And une means one. Seven and one is eight. So if you have eight is the number for man, and the second version of man is 88. If you take a capital letter E and you mirror it on itself, it's a number eight. And if you put two E's together, it's a number 88. Like you see, you seem to have like a different definition of like with the numerology, like like I thought like with the three sixty again, you know, six plus three is, is nine and nine is completion. But you said nine was something else. Cause nine you... it was the temporary version of a perfect slave that they made along the way. I suggest gays and lesbians would fit the description. Mm. Um because it's made in the image of six, which is the number for a woman. A nine is made to look like a six and creates the equilibrium. But in the final version, mm-hmm. uh, sex is not part of the equation. You have a hermaphrodite, so they're not looking for sex. They're, they're basically... Uh, Want to work? To impregnate themselves. So, right. so these. That's why in in the colloquial English they tell you "fuck you." It basically means "fuck <laughs> yourself." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um. So, so how do they do this? How do they just stop making, you know, without getting caught? Like, okay, like you said, like they basically engineer gays and lesbians and yeah. different types of. How do they do this? Like, how do they? Well, it, it's it's fairly simple if you look at the symbolism. Mm-hmm. Uh, the symbolism is woman is an X. Mm-hmm. If you break a leg, you make a Y. That's male. Mm-hmm. And therefore, if you break a leg but leave a little piece on there, that's a male with a little more female. But how do they introduce it in society? How do they, like... Through, through monasteries at the beginning, uh, what they call Vestal Virgins, mm-hmm. um, and the sacrifices of the priests and the, you know, the Aztecs, the, the uh, Mayan used to sacrifice people. The first, first thing you got to do is collect eggs. So you sacrifice people so you can do a hysterectomy and get the eggs out and put them in storage. Uh, and and then you have a basic batch of gazillion eggs. Now the, the thing is you put your people to work. And don't forget, I mean, these people had uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of years to do this. You know, we think of 2,000 years as a long time. Yeah. But you can believe that the process began at least in 125,000 B.C. And the understanding of genetic engineering by Neanderthalers had occurred by uh, 80,000 B.C. because that's where we see the first male appear in the clan mother community, so they go from being hermaphrodites to two genders. So take the time from 120,000 down to 80,000, that's 40,000 years they had to work this problem out. And and all it is is basically doing a, a, a study which comes to grasp grips with the the concept that uh, in the egg mm-hmm. are all the answers 
in the egg are all the instructions for everything that will make a human being, with the exception of it needs the, to be kick-started with a fertilizer. So what you have is these guys that, that and I call them guys, but they, they may not have been anything more than it's, <laughs> um, they start working on the problem of um, separating the instructions into placing them in jars, single instruction jars. So the the genome is broken down and it says, hmm, there are 125 to 144,000 uh, separate instructions. Now, to make a person, you require approximately twenty-five thousand instructions out of this vast collection of one hundred and forty-four thousand choices. You got to assemble together. 25,000. But even at that stage, 25,000, uh, 98% of that, and you'd end up with, with um, I don't know, a, a bat <laughs> or something like that. So what is really important is the last 2 two or 3%. Hang on a second. I got to mm-hmm. take this and I may have to go. All right. Hello. Hi, Barbara. I'm just finishing the call here. Five minutes. Thank you. Sorry, I had given her an appointment. Oh, okay. <laughs> Didn't know you were going to call at this specific time. Uh, but but that's the that's the basic thing. You separate the instructions into separate bottles. Mm-hmm. Then you get an egg. You open it up. You throw out what's in it, and then you start saying, uh, "I've killed off twenty five people who were all good athletes, and therefore the instructions in their DNA." had these particular instructions, and I suggest that those are needed for good athletes. So they start assembling a uh, person through instructions and and stick it in the egg. And then they find out that, yes, they did it right, or no, there's something wrong, and they go back and look at their numbers again, and trial and error is basically how they get through this. And that allowed them to arrive one day and meet the clan mothers and say, you know, clan mother, you could have slaves of your own who would do most of the work for you, the manual stuff. And if you want, I can do it. All I need from you is some eggs. So can you give me a couple of your ladies here and I'll do a hysterectomy and and then I'll make you some samples. And from the eggs they got, they made men. And men became the slaves of women. Mm. They didn't call them slaves in those days. They called them helpers. And eventually, they suckered the men to take power away from the clan mothers because they could control the men through instant gratification. Mm. Sex and a sandwich. Okay. Right. So, would you and, say like and, and that's where that's where we are today? It's just a process of them refining and and testing, trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, and now they're at the point where they're creating the basic model, the ten. But from the ten. They have to refine the finer points and make an 11 and a 12. And then finally they'll get what they want in a 13. A 1 with a 3 beside it looks like the letter B. 
Yeah, so would you say, like, okay, so all that stuff about, like, men being, like, you know, leaders of the you know, family and stuff like that, that's all? It's all bullshit. Oh, wow. All bullshit. It's all designed by the priests to get men to do certain things along the way that bring the process closer and closer each time to what they want. Mm. Marriage is bullshit. Yeah, no, yeah, marriage. <laughs> wow. Religion is bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Politics is bullshit. Yeah. You know, Talk to they control it all. You get to vote with for one of the three crooks they've chosen before <laughs> you vote. Okay? That's, yeah. that's basically all it is. Yeah. yeah. And the media runs it all. The media is the the spy in the middle that pretends it's on your side. But in fact, what they're there for is to polarize opinions. Wow. And and the place from which they ran a lot of this stuff was in the Pyrenees. Because on one side they had their warrior Spaniards and, and Portuguese who would travel the world and take over things. And on the other side they had the French who would stay home and sit and wait. And below them they had the priests and priests could promulgate language. And that's what they did. And and the Germans uh, are the instigators, uh, the Nazis because the philosophy of these people is fascist. It's Nazi. I thought really fascism and communism is the same thing, socialism. Really, at the root, it's, you know, one one. Well, it, it is. It's, it's only the difference is who's running the show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in in um, a socialist country, it's bureaucrats. Mm-hmm. And in a capitalist country, it's corporations. Mm-hmm. NGOs. <laughs> yeah. oh, so man. it's it's all crap. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I mean, there's nothing out there that is true to what people believe it to be. Yeah. Um, and it will eventually be proven to be just that. And my job is basically to find the concrete evidence of that, and that, I believe, is a stone, which is linked to the story of Enoch and Methuselah in the Bible. Uh, That's the symbolism for it, and I believe it happens to be here under my feet on this farm in Oxford on Rideau, Ontario, near Kempville. Uh, When reading the Bible, because I... How do I like? How do I better understand the allegories? Do I need like some type of groundwork to? Yeah, you need age. You need to be old enough to have experienced a lot of things. Damn. And and when you experience things, you find out the difference between what you've been told and what they really are. And then you go back and you read their stories, and. You can sense as you're going through because you're not only reading with your brain, but you're analyzing with your spine. So if your spine is functioning, you get intuition. It matches up with your reasoning, and the two of them put together allows you to break down allegory and symbolism. And as I said before, One of the best ways to physically improve that is to grasp the concept of Samson and Delilah and know that what they're talking about is not muscle but hair and let your hair grow beyond your shoulders. That way you will at least have uh, half a chance. The next thing is understand French because most of this was written in the French language. When it first started, it makes it easier to convert words you read in English over to French. Mm. And and then you you know what the real definition of what they're talking about.
talking about is. So, and you were saying too about like modified like food, like there's no point because we're we're already all modified. So you so you would go and just eat like McDonald's right now and not even care. Absolutely. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. I've eaten uh, anything and everything throughout my entire life, and I don't think for a minute that. Uh, my diet, which is totally balanced between everything, you know, mm-hmm. I, I put no no basic limits on it, um, has has kept me alive for 68 years, and and would if I had a normal diet, would physically keep me alive for the amount of time which is allotted to people. Uh, on this planet because we're genetically uh, uh, fixed to... So why would they alter the food then? Why would they do that? Why? In, in they, order I... to create dissension and two teams polarize people mm. between one group that believes it and one that doesn't. That's the whole process, and it's based on the polar star, which is called Polaris, Mm. And it's in there that you'll find the words, the the syllables to I R S, yeah. and Ola, which means high, and P, uh, and and P when you P, what you're doing is getting rid of dead cells, and they consider us to be dead cells, and they want to P us out of their lives. Wow. Uh-huh. Because with the, okay, with the GMO food, because I see, like, the Egyptians, they use it to control their slaves. That's why they last so long. So no, long. no, that's the stories. That's the media version. Oh. Wow. That's, that, all of this that you're, you're telling me is things you've read about. Mm-hmm. Is is accepted general knowledge? Well, it's lies. Oh. Everything the mass media sells to the masses mm-hmm. is lies. Yeah, it's just for the masses. So yeah. It's it's um. the word mass comes from the word ass. <laughs> You're a donkey carrying a message <laughs> down from the mountain with a message up her vagina. That's how they used to travel when they brought messages from the monastery on top of the mountain. In order for it not to be stolen, they wouldn't carry it on a horse because a horse was valuable and somebody would want to steal it. But who the hell would want to steal a donkey who doesn't listen? Wow. So they stick the message or the pouch with jewels or whatever in the vagina of a donkey and walk it down and go to wherever they want it to go, the next monastery over, and, and bring the messages there of what was required. And when the donkey uh, lost its purpose because it couldn't be used in war, mm-hmm. uh, they then made horses, genetically engineered horses. And and they made sure that the best uh, pack animals they had were made from a horse having sex with a donkey, and therefore they would make a mule, and the mule is the model of what they're doing today. An animal that cannot reproduce on its own needs an artificial insemination, or it's just going to die out because it can't reproduce itself. Wow. How would you suppose, like, the Neanderthals... Oh, they're still like I guess I'm and they're still like I have absolutely no idea if if uh, they as a breed mm-hmm. once they transferred their intelligence over to a central command if they continued living or if in fact it's not the computer today that runs the show on their behalf. I mean, that's the story of 2001 A Space Odyssey. Is you, you have this computer called HAL, 
And now we know that there is, in the Moho discontinuity, a computer called Hell. So Hell is running the show, and its devils are out all over the place making us believe bullshit. Oh. Yeah, but then I thought another thing behind the Dust the movie was how they uh, the guy overcame Hell and became God. Well, that's that's who they are. <laughs> yeah. They are gods, which is dogs backwards. They go fetch. They bring <laughs> everything back to them, <laughs> and and make people stupid enough to go and put it in the hole themselves. Gotta go. Okay. Bye. Bye.